This is Africa. Welcome to Today in African History for the 24th of June. So, today we're going to feature this famous African musician. But for a certain age group, yeah, he was quite famous. Uh, if you're 45 and above, you would probably have heard of Prince Nico Mbaga. Uh, his song is the most popular song on the African continent or has been for a very, very long time, for most of Africa's history, most of the countries of Africa's history, after independence, Prince Nico Mbaga is widely known. For the younger generation, if you're 45 and under, perhaps you haven't heard of him. And of course, the younger you are, the less likely that you've heard of him. His record actually sold more records than the Beatles' most popular record. Yes, you heard that right. This guy is little known on the African continent today, I bet you, most most Africans. And I estimate that those who haven't heard of him, probably 80% of African population, because those the first 45 years and above are not as many anymore. You know, those in the 20s and 30s are the vast majority of the African population today. So let's dive in. So again, his name is Prince Iko Mbaga, and the song you can hear in the background is called Sweet Mother. It's sold well over 3 million copies. So, a little bit about Prince Nico Mbaga. He was born on the 1st of January 1950 in a town called Abakaliki in Nigeria. His mother was Nigerian and his father was Cameroonian. His life was filled with both music and tragedy. At 17, during the Biafran War in 1967, he had to flee to Cameroon. Of course, he fled to the country where his father was from, where his father was born, uh, where he had family on his father's side, understandably so. But it was here, interestingly, that he mastered the guitar. So essentially, he learned how to play the guitar and mastered the guitar. So his passion for music took off during the Biafran Civil War in Nigeria. He played many instruments, including the xylophone, of all things, the conga, drums, bass guitar, and electric guitar. He first started performing in school bands and then joined a hotel band called the Melody Orchestra in 1970. 1976 came around and he and his band, the name of his band was Rockerfield Jazz, they recorded the famous song Sweet Mother. This song was sung in Pidgin English and it became an instant hit, selling over 13, I said three, I was wrong, 13 million copies across Africa. To give you some perspective, that's more than the Beatles, I want to hold your hand. So I want to hold your hand as the Beatles' um, highest grossing record in terms of sales. Sweet Mother sold more copies than this song by the Beatles. And now think about it, the purchasing power of people from Europe and America at the time, the 70s and 80s and 90s, was a lot, lot stronger than that of Africa. Just think about that. And yet, Sweet Mother sold more copies than the Beatles' most popular song. Because obviously it resonates with everyone. Every single person has a mother. Every single person has a mother. So it's understandable why this song sold so many copies. 
I know the funny thing is that this song was turned down by two record releases. Big names. Big names at the time. They thought the song was too um, childish. Um, I would have said childlike. It's a bit of an insult to think that it was too childish. But well, uh, what would the song that's being sung about someone's mom, what do you expect the song to sound like? You know, um, childhood is those times in life that people, adults today, want to go back to because it reminds them of a better time, you know, the love shown by the mother. Most mothers love their children. You know, it's a place of comfort for everyone, you know, and that's why we as adults, we, especially the men, you know, we want to look after our mothers. I know the women do that as well. The women tend to take care of their mothers and fathers, but we want to take care of our mothers and protect our mothers as men. It's only natural to return the faith of our mothers did as well, you know, their young children. So, despite the song's massive success, the global media didn't cover his life much. And Nico's story has largely remained untold. That is, until now, Sweet Mother is often called Africa's anthem because it resonates with so many people. It celebrates the love and sacrifices of mothers, making it a song that many people can relate to and cherish. And even though he only had one major hit, which was, of course, Sweet Mother, Prince Nico Mbaga was crucial in shaping African popular music. He created a unique style that combined Nigerian and Congolese guitar techniques with high life rhythms. Yes, he was a pioneer in his genre. After Sweet Mother, he and Rockerfield Jazz recorded nine albums from 1975 to 1981 that were quite popular in Nigeria and beyond. So later in his career, Prince Nico performed in England and became known for his glamorous stage presence, inspired by 1970s glam rock. But despite his vibrant performances, he couldn't replicate the success of Sweet Mother. Eventually, he returned to Nigeria and started managing his own hotel called the Sweet Mother Hotel, located near the Cameroon Nigeria border. So, presumably, it was located in Cameroon, very close to the border of Nigeria. Unfortunately, his life was cut short when he died in a motorcycle accident on this day, June 24th, 1997, in Calabar, Nigeria. So today marks it exactly 27 years since Prince Nico Mbaga lost his life in an accident. Um, so there are two stories. They're not divergent stories, but there are two reports about what happened prior to his accident. Now, one source says that he was going to the American embassy to get his visa. He was obviously, you know, he had an appointment and um, he was going to tour the 50 states of the United States of America. So, on his bike to get to the American embassy and um, a car ran into the bike that he was traveling on and um, he, he was hit, obviously fell down, he must have hit his head on the pavement and he was unconscious for two weeks until he passed on on this day, 24th June 1997. So that's one report. The other report was that he had his car at the mechanics and he needed to go get a spare part, a part that the mechanic needed to get his car working again. So he gets on a bike and he was heading to the shop to buy this part and that's when the accident happened. Perhaps there are two divergent stories, perhaps there's a connection, he also needed to get his car to the embassy for his appointment, who knows. Um, the point is, sadly, he died on this day exactly 27 years ago. So guys, if you like what we're sharing here, um, do us a favor, like the video, share the video as well, you know, if you're 42 even 70, or even 75, and you're African, born and bred, you would have heard of the song, Sweet Mother. That is, and I can almost guarantee you that those in this age bracket have heard the song. You know, I heard it for the first time in 1979. I was only six years old, I'm 51 now. I was six years old. Um, 
six or seven, six or seven. And I grew to be more than seven. So six or seven, and uh, there was a party going on two doors away from our house, or two houses away. And <clears throat> at the time, I thought these were just our neighbors, family, friends, not realizing these were actually um, our in laws. You know? So this was my mother's sister's husband's mother's birthday. You know, so her birthday was being celebrated. Perhaps at the time she was 60. And I am, you know, using my rough estimate of um, the year 1979. Uh, yeah, very likely she was celebrating her 60th birthday. That's possible. Maybe 50th birthday. And then we were invited, of course. I was six, six or seven at the time. And I heard the song for the first time. I'm like, wow, what song is this, you know? Um, so that's my own personal experience. I mean, guys, drop me a comment. Tell me where you heard this song for the first time. Um, let's go back in time. Um, this is a very nostalgic song. It brings back memories. Some of us listening to this um, video or watching this video, um, we don't. our moms are not around anymore. Uh, so this is a time to reflect on the love that our mothers gave us, the training, the discipline. You know, um, there's a part in the song where it says, um, where the mother is worried about her sick child. She said, um, your child is not eating. Uh, what did they worry you? What did they do you? And you know, well, you know, it's so it's so touching. It, it's absolutely touching. It's so touching. So if you haven't heard this song before, and again, there's a song that's playing in the background. You can listen to the full version. It's on YouTube. Just type Sweet Mother. It's going to pop up, obviously, with this picture there. Um, so let me carry on. So um, he had nine children. Um, Prince Nico and Baga had nine children. Um, his first child is named after him. His name is Nico. And then Descro, Estelle, and Simplitz. These four are actively involved in music, keeping their father's legacy alive. The others have pursued various careers in business and the Nigerian civil service. It's remarkable how one song can touch so many lives. Sweet Mother remains a beloved song across Africa, often played at celebrations and family gatherings. So why haven't you heard of him? Well, sometimes the most influential artists don't get the global recognition they deserve, especially when their fame is regional but the impact is undeniable and it's important to share their stories. Prince Nico Mbaga may not be a household name around the world anymore or may not have ever been a household name, but his contribution to music and the joy he brought to millions is undeniable. We hope you enjoyed learning about Prince Nico Mbaga today. If you haven't heard Sweet Mother, Go listen to it. It's a beautiful trip to mothers everywhere. Thanks for joining us today. And again, if you do like this video, give us a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to the channel to help us more people. Thanks a lot for dropping by today. See you on the next video. Hasta la vista.